if he chooses not to cooperate and acts in a way that he has in the past relative to cybersecurity and some other activities, then we will respond. The president also denouncing Putin's crackdown of his political opponents when asked what would happen if high-profile Putin critic Alexei Navalny died in a Russian jail. It would be a tragedy. It would do nothing but hurt his relationships with the rest of the world, in my view, and with me. In Cur- well, here it is. If any Russian military forces move across the Ukrainian border, that's a renewed invasion. It will be met with swift, severe, and united response from the U.S. and our allies. And I uh, told President Putin on, on Monday what uh, uh, I think everybody in the G7 uh, and, and more widely is agreed that if Russia uh, were so rash, so mad as to engage in an invasion of uh, sovereign territory of Ukraine, then there would be uh, an extremely tough package of economic sanctions uh, mounted by uh, our allies, mounted by the UK and our friends around the world. Uh, There would also, of course... It's your host, Jackson Dornock. If you paid any attention to the news over the past month or so, You'll know that tensions are rising over in Ukraine between that country and Russia. There have been 100,000 troops amassed off of their border. You can read an article from the BBC that pertains to that. It says some. 8,500 combat ready U.S. troops are on high alert to deploy at short notice among risen rising the hell? amid rising tension over Ukraine the Pentagon says Russia then continues to deny planning military action against Ukraine despite massing 100,000 troops nearby President Biden held a video call with European allies on Monday as Western powers began to aim, aim for a common strategy against Russian aggression. The Pentagon said no decision had been made yet on whether to deploy troops. It would only happen if the NATO military alliance decides to activate a rapid reaction force, or if other situations develop around the Russian troops buildup, says Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby. There are no plans to deploy to Ukraine itself, he added. Some NATO members, including Denmark, Spain, France, and the Netherlands, have things to say. I'm not going to read that part. I'm going to skip down to a Downing Street spokesperson. Downing Street is kind of like what the White House is to the president. Said the leaders agreed on the importance of international unity in the face of growing Russian hostility. Should a further Russian incursion into Ukraine happen, the leaders agreed that allies must enact swift retributive responses, including an unprecedented package of sanctions. Earlier on Monday, Mr. Johnson weighed in on the situation in Russia. Or if Russia is planning a lightning raid on the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, the intelligence is very clear that there are 60 Russian battle groups on the borders of Ukraine. The plan for a lightning war that could take out Kiev is one that everyone can see, he said. We need to make it very clear to the Kremlin, to Russia, that that would be a disastrous step. Now we're going over to the second article. If Putin says he won't invade Ukraine, why is the U.S. rope warning Russia? Assad, Ula, China. Paul Adams writes, Wars are one thing, and you're right. Russians keep saying they won't invade, but their actions point in another direction. There have been a massing of forces with support for separatists in the Donbass, including handing out 1 million Russian passports and the threat of dire consequences if Ukraine does anything provocative. Yes, um, it's interesting just what's going on. Um, I remember growing up, I would read... This passage from a book, I'm, I forget what it's called, but it really stuck with me, you know, just about what happened with the building of the atomic bomb and why World War Three is pretty much donezo for humanity, you know, with mutually just 
and assured destruction i believe it's what what it's called but i mean yeah i don't know why and of course we have our allies are starting to threaten russia and russians allies are probably going to start coming out to threaten the u.s and things are getting tense i believe a couple weeks ago the Vladimir Putin and President Biden had a conference uh, through like some sort of Skype type thing, but obviously not on Skype. Just talking about the things that were going on. And as I put in the beginning of this video, uh, Biden issued a warning. And this is just an odd thing to me because this conflict doesn't have to be like this at all. And uh, I saw a comment on a YouTube video while I was doing research for this that said that this was an attempt by Vladimir Putin to distract from Russian domestic issues. And I was like, that's odd. So I started looking into it. And you know, uh, so around COVID time, uh, there began to be a lot more crackdowns. And I'm putting a video up of me scrolling through Human Rights Watch. And they highlight a lot of the bad things they've done. They've banned freedom of assembly completely. There's a man who spoke out against Vladimir Putin. I forget his name at this point, but he he's in prison now. And and there's a law that banning all disrespect to authorities and pretty much. Uh, it's been found that it's mostly people who speak out against Vladimir Putin. So in my opinion, uh, that's, that's one way of looking at it. But to finish this all off, do I think there's really going to be a, n another world war? No. There's a very, very low chance because you've got to look at it from these leaders' perspectives. Like, if they win the war, they they don't win the war, you know, because everyone's dead. It's, this is not a war that anyone can win, which perturbed the Cold War from happening, but, or from escalating, I should say. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. You just gotta watch out and hope that these leaders don't go crazy or do something crazy. But, until then, Alright, peace.